The Google Nexus 5 is finally a reality, and I do believe that if I dedicated the last 60 episodes of the Pocket Now Daily to this phone, I wouldn't be exaggerating. And it is a great phone, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but if you weren't able to order this device, I know that you're still on the ropes trying to decide if it's worth it to make the line and actually wait to order this device. So you've come to the right place. I'm Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now, and these are the reasons why we love the Nexus 5, and the reasons why we believe that the Nexus 5 could be better. The first reason to love the Nexus 5 is really the fact that it's a non-compromised powerhouse. The Nexus lineup has always been this mixed bag of either great specifications on a non-affordable unlocked price tag or a very affordable phone with not great specifications like in the case of the Nexus 4. This device brings us back to the time of the Nexus 1. We finally get a device that doesn't envy anything from the current flagship smartphones. It's actually one of the few devices to rock the Snapdragon 800 processor in the United States. 2 gigs of RAM, a 5 inch 1080p display that's apparently gorgeous. We have an optical stabilized camera with a megapixels which we're really looking forward to because photographs on Nexus devices have always been terrible. So overall the first reason why you would buy the Nexus 5 is because really it's one of the best smartphones in the market right now. now. The second reason to love the Nexus 5 is that aside from the fact that it's a powerful phone you also have Android with no excuses. Meaning if you're currently rocking a Galaxy S3 I'm sure you love the fact that Android 4.3 is not available to your phone just yet. And if you're rocking an HTC device I'm sure you love the fact that you have to wait 90 days to get Android 4.4, where in the case of Nexus devices, you don't really have that problem. The new versions of Android are out, and the Nexus devices are the first ones to get it. Even the Google Edition phones, the HTC One and Galaxy S4, sadly don't have the luck of the Nexus lineup. And when you think about the fact that a Google Edition phone costs you $650, and then you have the Nexus devices costing you half as much, what is the real purpose of buying any other phone if the Nexus 5 is actually more powerful than these Google Google Edition phones. And that brings us to the third reason why you would buy a Nexus 5. This is the most affordable flagship in the market by far. And by far, think about this. If you want to buy an iPhone 5S right now, unlock 16 gigs, it'll cost you 650 bucks plus tax. And in the case of the Nexus 5, you'll pay $350 for that same phone. No, I'm not kidding, $350. When you think about it, you get a more powerful phone. You get all the specifications that you wanted this year. It's pretty much a future-proof phone for the next two years, and you only pay $350 for the 16 gig model. There is really no compelling reason why you would not buy this phone, even if you don't need it. Now fine, let's flip the coin. Not everything about any phone is perfect, and obviously there are things about the Nexus 5 that could improve even if you'll notice that most of these things actually do not have to do with the phone. Number one is availability and distribution. Probably the biggest problem is that if you want to get a Nexus 5 right now, you can't. It's sold out. You can only buy it in the Google Play Store, and unless you're in the United States or in the countries that are supported, you really cannot get the Nexus 5. And it's really been the problem with the Nexus lineup over the last couple of years. I have friends that still do not know what the Nexus 4 or the Galaxy Nexus were. They have no clue that this phone even existed, and it mainly has to do with the fact that this phone is not really popularly distributed like the Galaxy S4, for example. A lot of people say that the Galaxy S4 is popular because of its marketing, and that's half true. The marketing is really worthless if the phone is not available. And in the case of the Galaxy S4, it's available on every carrier in almost every country, even in countries where the iPhone is not being sold yet. So when you think about it, the marketing is great, the availability is also great, and this is really what the Nexus lineup needs. It needs to be available everywhere, and at this price point, there is no reason why it wouldn't sell. That brings us to the second problem of this phone, which is the carrier subsidy model. Yes, the Nexus lineup has been historically subsidized, but only by T-Mobile and at a very crazy price tag. Yeah, we did have a case with Verizon, but I'm not even going to include that. And still, just think about it. You get a $350 phone that should be free on contract if you compare it to the iPhone 5S, which is a $650 phone that's $200 on contract. Obviously, the price difference allow this to happen, but that hasn't historically happened. T-Mobile charged a crazy amount of money for this phone. That was a different T-Mobile though, but right now we're hearing about Sprint, we're hearing about other carriers, but we still don't know the pricing scheme just yet. And hopefully if carriers are smart enough, this could be the next big hit for them, if they were smart enough to sell this phone for free. And finally, one of the biggest reasons why we're disappointed about this phone is really because of their parent company. 
Google. Yeah, they're not doing a really good job in marketing their products. They haven't done that historically. If this were a Galaxy phone, this would be the hottest thing on the planet at that price tag. But sadly, Google doesn't do things the same way. They are not in the business of selling phones, and that's really unfortunate because there is nothing low-key about this device. We didn't get an event. We didn't get anything. It was just announced. It was just put out there, and fine. Yeah, we were judged the pre-orders. This is a blockbuster so far, but we don't really know how many units are actually manufactured. Why did it sell out initially? Uh, so yeah, this could be the greatest opportunity in the hands of Google right now in making Android probably the next best thing in really disrupting the market because of this price tag and these specifications. And sadly, Google has decided to go silent, and that's rather unfortunate. And yeah, there is one reason why we're mixed about this phone. I love the design of this phone. I love the LG G2, and I love the fact that this phone looks a lot like it. But then we have other members of the Pocket Now team that don't feel that way. A lot of people feel that the design of this phone is uninspired, that it's too simplistic, that it's too stale. And uh, I have to agree with them in part. The design is definitely not the biggest thing out there. But then again, the iPhone is really just a slab. Sony phones are just a slab. And yeah, this phone doesn't have any chrome around it. It doesn't look as elegant as the Nexus 4 did or as the Galaxy Nexus did. So I'll give you that. The design is definitely mixed. So that leads us to the question of this video. Do you like the design of the Nexus 5? Is it really inspiring to you? Again, in my particular case, I really like this phone. I like it for so many reasons that I really don't care about the design that much. And I do like the design in part. Obviously, I have to hold this phone first. But leave us a comment down below and let us know what you love, what you hate about this phone, and specifically, if you like the design. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you tomorrow.